EBMT brings together the very best in the field of HSCT and cellular therapy. Now as the 47th annual meeting and the second virtual edition gets started, we're here to bring you the highlights on EBMT TV. Welcome to day three here at the 47th annual meeting of the EBMT. We hope you've learned a lot already and taken a look at everything the virtual platform has to offer and there's plenty more to come. On the show today, we catch up with this year's John J. Van Rood Award winner, hear a special message about the 20th anniversary of the data management meeting and take a look at the Siteman Cancer Centre in the USA and Canadian Blood Services. First, bringing us up to speed with Tuesday at the meeting, it's Anna Sureda. Good morning, everybody. My name is Anna Sureda. I work in Barcelona, Spain, and I am the scientific chair for this year's meeting. I'm sure you will agree with me that we have an outstanding program today. So we have four educational sessions and three different workshops. A plenary session, which is devoted to machine learning and artificial intelligence, and a special session, which is dedicated to benchmarking strategies. Please don't forget that today we have our pharmacist day and we have the possibility to attend really very interesting and interactive session. And we also have the quality management day. Before I finish, I don't want to forget that we have two general sessions for two different working parties. And please don't miss the award session as well as the general assembly, where we will be able to listen to our president's report, the treasurer and the secretary report, as well as the official results of the elections for 2021. So thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy the program today and hope to see all of you around. EBMT TV is brought to you virtually from the 47th annual meeting of the EBMT. You can find us at the entrance to the virtual platform via the navigation menu and at the EBMT hub. You'll also find us on the EBMT website and on the meeting app. And make sure to hit the playlist button to check out extended versions of all of our content, from award winners to hospital and donor centre site visits. It's all on EBMT TV. Francisca Uhl is this year's John J. Van Rood Award winner, and her work looks at the impact of metabolic reprogramming of donor T cells. Francisca, what does metabolic reprogramming mean, and how did you do it? So metabolic reprogramming is actually a process which is known uh, for many cell types. So in T cells, a naive T cell watches and waits for its antigen, and at that time, it wants to use energy as efficiently as possible. It basically relies on oxidative phosphorylation. During activation, the T cells undergoes metabolic reprogramming. So it upregulates its aerobic glycolysis. And in this aerobic glycolysis, the pyruvate is then fermented to lactate. This process is much faster than generating energy through OXFOS. And we've observed that in AML patients with a relapse after allogenic transplantation, they have a severely disturbed metabolic T cell phenotype. How does it enhance graft versus leukemia effects? And how effective was it in your study? Yeah, we've observed basically a full recovery of the metabolic phenotype in cell culture. And we took this into the mouse model, where we used sodium bicarbonate treatment also in graft versus leukemia models, and could see that now the mice survived much better when they uh, received T cells and a sodium bicarbonate treatment at the same time. So we went back from the bench to the bedside and uh, used sodium bicarbonate in patients and administered to patients with an AML relapse after allogenic transplantation. And these patients also received donor lymphocyte infusions at the same time. And we observed that the T cells of these patients had a much better um, respiratory activity now. And this was accompanied by a much better effector cytokine production. This is a strong indicator 
that we also increase the anti-tumor control of the T-cells in these patients. Now, as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of the data management meeting, let's hear a special message from one of EBMT's data managers. My name is Anne Vos and I work as a nurse at the University Hospital Antwerp, Belgium since 1987. In 2004, I've got the opportunity to attend the EBMT Congress in Barcelona. The data management sessions caught my attention, so I attend some of them. I have always been interested in the story of reason behind things passion for genetics, human behavior, and appearance of diseases or symptoms. In April 2005, there was a vacancy for MedA registrations at our team. A year later, I changed to work MedB registrations, much more interesting, and I could do more studies. Then normally followed by cell therapy some years ago. Most exciting part for me is the important growth in genetic and molecular testing, cell therapy and gene modulation. I am looking forward for the launch of MACRO. I think that will be a fine, good process in our work. Now let's go to the United States to visit the Siteman Cancer Center, where they're pioneering personalized medicine and novel therapies for a wide range of hematologic malignancies. Personalized medicine is really um, diving into the genetics of a patient's tumor and disease and identifying where it's gone wrong in specific terms, and then identifying that those genes or pathways and targeting them with specific therapies. Natural killer cells, or NK cells, are one of the innate uh, immune cell types that help protect us from infection and also mediate anti-tumor response. What they really do is work together with other immune cells as the first responder, and they can do a couple of things. They can kill cancer cells, and they can orchestrate other immune cells to come in and help mediate a bigger immune response to that cancer. I think that we were really at the very forefront of personalized medicine, but I I think where we're different is that we're moving into new frontiers that nobody else is there yet and so the things that we're doing now will become hopefully standard of care in the next decade or so. We're heading to Canada now, where Canadian blood services have been providing effective, reliable products and services all across the country for over two decades. We actually oversee Canada's blood system in all of the provinces and territories outside of Quebec. So we collect red cells, plasma, platelets, we're involved in intraprovincial organ sharing, and we also run Canadian Blood Services' stem cell program. Banking core blood units from a broad range of ethnic backgrounds is ensuring that we have those HLA matching opportunities for more patients. The whole field of cellular therapy and regenerative medicine continues to grow and expand, so I anticipate that we'll continue to see more uses of stem cell products. Great work there from Canada. Well, that's it from us here for Tuesday at the meeting. Do enjoy the rest of your day and make sure to stop back tomorrow for more from us, including an interview with the Chan Chan Luan award winner and a look at Germany's first registry. We'll see you then. <laughs>